The Mad Lads did it, guys. Tears of the Kingdom sold 10 million copies. Actually, according to Nintendo, more than 10 million copies in three days. If you remember, the last time Nintendo excitedly talked about launch sales was Scarlet and Violet. When they boldly stated that Pokemon Scarlet and Violet were the fastest selling Nintendo published games in history, moving 10 million copies in three days. Well, now, Tears of the Kingdom has moved more than 10 million copies in three days. Now, we aren't 100% sure if it moved a little bit more units than Pokemon Scarlet and Violet because of the way they worded the announcements. So it is possible that Scarlet and Violet might technically still be the leader. But what is clear is that a Nintendo internally created self-published and not reliant on dual release game just sold 10 million copies north of 10 million copies in three days to me this makes tears of the kingdom the fastest selling nintendo game of all time and we got to talk about this because it's absolutely incredible but first i want to ask you guys if you would please subscribe to the channel, we are trying to get to 133,000 subscribers to match the number of years that Nintendo has existed, which is 133. And honestly, this YouTube journey is just something that I am personally on and have been on for a number of years because I wanted to chase my dreams. Uh, YouTube's been a dream of mine for a while. And, you know, people like me aren't supposed to make it on YouTube. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm getting a few years away from 40 here. And, you know, at this point, you're supposed to give up on your dreams and just do uh, what people tell you to do. You know, graduate college and, and go work hard at all these other things. And I've, I've worked all these jobs over the years. But as I had children, I got three of them. It became obvious to me that one thing I wanted to teach my children is no matter how old you get, you're, it's never too late to chase your dream. Because you know what? We have this one life to live on this planet. So this to me and, and, and making it on YouTube and achieving what we want to achieve around here and being able to support my family, this to me is the ultimate goal long haul. And you guys can just help me get there and help show my kids that it's never too late to chase your dreams by subscribing to the channel. Also, we have some neat giveaways going on as well. You can enter down in the pinned comment or in the description. Uh, this is for our Prime Gaming Fest next month, but hey, you can enter right now. Highly and Shield replica, we're giving away like Zelda OLEDs and collector's editions, but that's not really the brux of the point here. Um, I just thank you guys ahead of time for even watching this video. All right, guys, so we got to talk about this 10 million sales figure because for starters, there was a time that Zelda, the Zelda series, had never had a Zelda game sell 10 million copies, right? That was obviously broken by, well, Breath of the Wild, right? You know, basically a 30 million. I mean, it's it's a hair short of 30 million, but if you include the Wii U version, it's a 30 million seller. And that is that, that, that in and of itself is just incredible. When you think back to like the best-selling individual system uh, game to come out being Twilight Princess in the past. Even Twilight Princess was a dual release, but on um, Wii it sold over 8 million copies. And I'm sure if you throw in like, you know, the Twilight Princess HD version, then it's over 10. You throw in all the re-releases of Walking of Time, it's probably well over 10, maybe even over 20 million. But people don't really consider the re-releases when you're talking about how well a game sells, right? Re-releases and remasters and all that are great, but when we talk about how well, you know, a game sold, we're talking about what did it sell on its original platforms during its heyday, not combining sales of, you know, other versions of it over time. I don't think that's a fair way to compare because then it comes down to like, well, how many times did they re-release it? Like, hey, Ocarina of Time has been on several different eShops that you had to rebuy it on. It's now on NSO. They also had the Ocarina of Time 3D version, whereas like other Zelda games, some of them have never been re-released. So I do think that we need to be a little considerate when doing comparisons like that. But what we can do is talk about how this game has launched. Because you see, 10 million sales, north of 10 million sales in three days, is a number that, as someone who's been covering Zelda games since I was 12, it just seems unfathomable to me. This is the sort of sales, and I mentioned this during my live stream yesterday, that really propels the Zelda franchise into a mega IP. Now, what that is a mega IP? I don't even know if this is a term anyone uses. This is just a term I've been using to describe IPs that transcend 
AAA gaming. So AAA gaming, for the most part, just means high budget, high effort, uh, and uh, uh, attempting to um, sell really well for that high budget and that high effort. You know, it, it is a premium experience. That's what AAA was is supposed to mean or used to mean. Obviously, it's been muddled because we've gotten a number of AAA games that have failed to deliver on some of those prospects or overpromised. And you know, with Cyberpunk 2077 or Redfall, you know, we've had a number of AAA games just kind of fall on their face a little bit. So the AAA name, you know, over the years has been a bit tarnished. You know, it used to basically mean A, a tier, B tier, C tier. You know, single A, double A, triple A. But here's the thing. A mega IP to me transcends the typical just, hey, it's just a high budget game where they tried really hard and it performed well and we got good reviews. This transcends that. Okay, there are transcendent IPs out there, mega IPs. Let me give you some examples beyond Zelda now. Mario. Mario's a mega IP, right? Whether it's the mainline Mario games, whether it's the spin-offs, where you have like Mario Kart doing 58 million, whether it's the Mario movie, now the fourth highest grossing box office animated film of all time. It's very clear that Mario has become a transcendent, or as I like to call it, a mega IP, right? It's probably been a mega IP for a long time, but that's one example. Pokemon, another mega IP and it doesn't you know one thing these have in common now is they have existences outside of gaming but you don't have to have that right a mega IP doesn't necessarily even have to be a game but it is something that is transcendent in a way it, it doesn't just sell for five million six million per game it sells a lot and has the potential to sell a lot and a potential to reach a much broader audience Super Mario Odyssey selling 25 million 1.2 billion at the box office yeah Mario is a transcendent IP. Mario Kart, 58 million. Yeah, it's a mega IP. Another mega IP with Pokemon. Obviously, Pokemon's been a mega IP for some time between its movies, its TV shows, and yeah, the game, the card game, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? No doubt that, that Pokemon's a mega IP. There are other mega pies, IPs out there. I would argue as an example, Spider-Man's a mega IP, right? Not only are the games doing incredibly well right now, on top of that, you have the movies and all that stuff. So yeah, Spider-Man's a mega IP. In fact, Spider-Man's been really popular for a long time, just not the comic books and all that, but even looking at how many times have they rebooted Spider-Man on the movie theater because Spider-Man keeps performing really well in the movie theater, right? It's been popular even before the whole MCU thing blew up. So yeah, that's another mega IP. Star Wars is another mega IP. So there are a number of mega IPs out there. And I feel like now that Zelda's done this twice, and I always felt like it needed to repeat Breath of the Wild success in order to be called a mega IP. Because to become a mega IP, you need to have sustained success. If you have a one-off that blows up, let's say Breath of the Wild you know, does 30, let's say Breath of the Wild sold 50 million copies, but then the next game comes out and it sells 8 million. Still really good numbers for a Zelda game, but pretty disappointing compared to Breath of the Wild. Then you can start to call Breath of the Wild a fluke game, right? It was a fluke, not a fluke review wise, but a fluke in terms of its appeal, right? It didn't really make Zelda blow up. It just had a one-off success. As an example, Wii Sports, right? Wii Sports blew up, right? Incredible. But none of the subsequent releases of versions of Wii Sports was really ever able to get back to what the original did, making the original feel like a fluke. So Wii Sports isn't really a mega IP, right? Nintendo Switch Sports, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, those sports IPs for Nintendo, even though they had one that sold way better than Breath of the Wild, it was a one-off. So I wouldn't call that a mega IP. However, Zelda is, because not only did it have one sell 30 million, it's now got another crossing 10, clearly going to sell 20 million plus. And I think if you're in that 20 million plus territory where games and you get to their pretty consistency or get really close pretty consistently, yeah, that makes you a mega IP. And I think there are levels to this. As an example, I do think Kirby is starting to enter 
new levels as well. When you look at the Kirby franchise, uh, you know, it's usually one of those you can consistently rely to sell a couple million. Uh, it's usually made on a budget. It's not, you know, they can bust out these games every year, every other year. Uh, but they did something different with their last Kirby game. With Kirby in the Forgotten Land, they put more budget into it. They put more time into it. And they took it in a new direction. And ultimately, it led to the best-selling Kirby game of all time, selling 5, 6 million copies. And 5, 6 million copies is right around what Zelda games have been doing for 30-plus years. And Zelda games were AAA experiences. So I think Kirby in the Forgotten Land might be the first time Kirby has released a AAA game. So now, if Kirby can do it again with the next release, then you start to look at Kirby differently as a, a potential AAA game moving forward. Same thing could happen to Luigi's Mansion here. Luigi's Mansion 3 selling what it did. Well, if the next one starts to hit 20 million, suddenly maybe Luigi's Mansion becomes a mega IP. Of course, you can argue Luigi could just be swept in with the whole Mario thing, and I understand that explanation, but the point is that there aren't a ton of of mega IPs I would throw out there. Lord of the Rings is probably another mega IP. But I, I just, when it comes to IPs that started as video games, I don't really think that there's a lot of tentpole mega IPs. There are things like God of War is a big deal. But is God of War a mega IP? Does it sell 20 million plus consistently? No, not really. Uh, I don't even know if it sold 20 million plus one time. So, I, I, to me, it's an interesting prospect to consider that Tears of the Kingdom has now repeated that Breath of the Wild success. Again, we don't know where the final sales are going to end up because that's going to be years down the road. But to sell $10 million in three days, I mean, that that is utterly incredible. That is f more copies sold in three days than most of PlayStation's exclusive libraries, lifetime to date sales ever across all PlayStation platforms. That's insane. Now, they do have some games that have sold more than 10 million, but most of their exclusives don't sell 10 million plus. And Nintendo just pulled that off with Zelda in three days. So, again, Zelda's sort of become this mega IP. I'm really excited about that, of course. I think it's well deserved. And it kind of just goes to show $70 DLC. What are we talking about? People are buying the game, anyways. Oh, and guess what? People aren't really disappointed when they bought the game. Oh, the game leaked, you know, almost two weeks early. Yeah, and guess what? It still didn't hurt the sales. No matter what the naysayers say, no matter the frame rate drops, no matter whatever people want to talk about, Tears of the Kingdom is an event game. It's an event game now. Zelda is an event game. It's a game we're going to get once every four or five years, and it's going to be an event every time. That's what a mega IP becomes. It becomes an event. So... I'm really excited about this. I know you're really excited about it, too. Hey, some of you guys are really excited, obviously, about Spider-Man. There's a new Spider-Man game coming this year, right? That could arguably be considered another event game. Good on Sony. So, look, guys, this is awesome. You guys are awesome. I'm really glad to have you guys here on this journey. And uh, I'll catch you guys in the next video. Yeah.